And there's good news out there today, by the way. There's good news uh, amidst everything. Really good news. Life is a bit rubbish, we know. OK, right now. Uh, but we are living in challenging times. The roll call of what is wrong is not a good list. There's all the obvious stuff. You can't see your own family. Christmas could be cancelled. You can't even visit your elderly nan in a care home unless you're standing in another postcode and talking through several sheets of plate glass. And even then, you stand the risk of getting arrested if you make a wrong move. You can't go to work. Or if you can go to work, you can hardly talk to your colleagues due to a heady mixture of face cloths and social distancing. And even if you do have a job, there's a constant worry that that job might not be there in a few months' time. Most of the shops are still closed. Many of those shops will never reopen. Bankruptcies are on the increase. Livelihoods destroyed. Mental health problems through the roof. NHS waiting lists have never been longer. The pub is shut. You can't go to a gig or a show. Your local high street looks like the set of 28 Days Later. And life in general is a bit barren. It's barren. It's also boring. There's nothing. Life is boring. This is how Alid Jones's wife must feel all the time. Life isn't great, but don't worry about that. Panic over. Life might have been utterly devastated, but there's good news. Boris Johnson has a 10-point plan for a green revolution. Hey, hey, see, that's cheered you up no end, hasn't it, this afternoon, you little monkeys? Prime Minister Boris Johnson's long-awaited climate plan includes hastening the end of petrol and diesel cars, new nuclear hydrogen and carbon capture. They'll also be talking about banning bad boilers in new homes and making sure that we all adhere to the green agenda. Life's going to be tickety-boo thanks to the big 10-point plan for the green revolution. Why are you not buying into this? 0344 499 one thousand. What is? Why are you struggling to buy into the green revolution? What is it about that one area of life that a sizable chunk of British people? It's probably the same across the world, but us Brits go a green revolution. Really? Is it because it's all kind of interwoven with the, the politics that perhaps underpins? The Green Revolution, which invariably comes from the, the, the tree huggers and the soap dodgers over there in the Green Party. Is, is it that? Is it because we instantly see Swampy up a tree or a tunnel or wherever it was he lurked for six months? And we imagine that, that, you know, white middle class blokes with dreadlocks, that lot. Do you think that's the problem? We kind of have that image. Is it that? Is it something else? I'm kind of, I am compromised on this. I'll, I'll, I'll explain why I'm compromised. Boris Johnson is absolutely determined to make sure that this forms a key part of the rest of his governing of our country. Look, the planet evolves, the planet changes. There's been times when our environmental systems have been vastly different from where they are today. Going back thousands of years, we've had ice ages. Uh, there's been times when the planet is far hotter than it is today. The south of England used to be a hot haven, acres and acres and acres and acres of vineyards across verdant land in the south. That's how hot it was. Nobody disputes the planet is in a constant state of evolution. The natural environmental order of the Earth dictates the climate and the weather will change. Natural phenomena. I get it. That's not in dispute. What seems to be in dispute here is the man-made component of all of these things. The man-made aspect being on top of what is already happening naturally. I think, does that more or less, I think that sort of clarifies what we're talking about here. But there is huge resistance. 0344 499 1000. Why are you struggling to buy into the green agenda? So the obvious example, and I'm going to give you a cracking reason why we might have to in a second. Obvious example would be something like, of all the many issues, so we've got things warming up and we've got um, species on the wonk and all the terrible things going on in terms of seawater rising. Obvious example would be polluted rivers and oceans, right? Now, that didn't happen because of a wholly natural environmental diktat. That happened because somebody lobbed their discarded KFC bucket into a river. That's a man-made, right? No doubt about that. Plastic into rivers and seas. In extreme cases, of course, some countries, the entire refuse system of the whole town or city is dumped into the sea or the river. So there's that. Uh, £14 billion worth of rubbish. £14 billion gets dumped in oceans every year. Did you know 5,000 people die a day as a result of drinking unclean water? 
Now, that's not down, we are told, to a natural occurrence. That's down to mucky characters who can't put stuff in a bin, to put it bluntly. Uh, 20 warmest years over the last, well, the 20 warmest years on record have all happened in the last 22 years. This is what I'm told, OK? This could be absolute hogwash. I'm just telling you what I'm told. More than one million species on planet Earth face extinction. Now, normally the planet expects to lose five species a year. Did you know that? What are they that's going? I'm guessing like little bugs and stuff. I mean, it's not your average monkey, isn't it? We, we, that would be headline news. Uh, although there are, of course, lots of dwindling examples of species, even in the, the, the kind of A-listers, if you like. Your lions, your tigers and the like. Uh, so, so five species a year normally get. We're currently running at 10,000 times that rate. So these could be tiny things that you're not, nobody would really care about. Does it matter if a, there's one less beetle in the world? I'm not referring to the death of Paul. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to go there, all right? <laughs> yeah, my luck that we'll get a breaking news story in a minute. 0344 499 1000. So there's all of that. And, and my thinking is this. So it's always been slightly this. And we know yesterday we kind of exposed Boris Johnson's, uh, well, the illusion of the electric car um, and how it's not quite as environmentally friendly as some people are pretending. I've always thought if there is a reason to go green, then uh, and in the States, this isn't that remarkable. There's a big sort of Republican camp, despite the sort of Trump like resistance to climate change and green. A lot of Republicans uh, have taken a sort of wholly capitalist approach to this and gone, Do you know what? There's money in them. their green hills. Let's just use this as the ultimate reset. It's that word, kids. Reset. The ultimate reset in order to reinvigorate the capitalist economy. Because it's not about a green revolution, it's about an economic revolution that we need, um, regardless of what you think about the reasonings behind green environmentally based issues. Just look at it if you have to, solely from a financial aspect, new businesses, new jobs, new initiatives, huge innovation, uh, buying, selling, trading, imports, exports, etc., all based around the green thing. Build those windmills on the hills and watch the bucks roll in. Simple as that. But there's so there's that there's a sort of a, an absolute arch capitalist reason to sign up to green matters. But there's another reason, um, and that is whether or not you're willing to take the chance. And I'm just going to play you a little clip here. Uh, this is Christopher Hitchens, that sadly, the late Christopher Hitchens, one of the most um, uh, just one of the most persuasive, in incredibly articulate uh, verbose and fluent speakers of our time. Sadly, no longer with us. Christopher Hitchens is the uh, was the brother of uh, uh, Peter Hitchens, of course. The, the I mean, you think Peter Hitchens can string a persuasive sentence together? You ain't heard anything as you've heard Christopher. Uh, so Christopher Hitchens was often called a climate denier, a climate change denier, the man-made aspect. But he made a really good point, and he made this on a number of occasions before he died, about the reasons why we should take the green argument seriously. Have a listen. The argument about global warming, it seems to me, is not whether there is any warming, but whether or not, to what extent, human activity is responsible for it. My line on that is we should act as if it is. We don't have another planet on which to run the experiment. We can't find out but one way. And just as we don't have the right to run an experiment in nuclear exchange on this planet, because it doesn't belong to us to that extent, we've no right to run an experiment in warming on it either. And if, so if it turned out to be that there was no severity, a severe global warming threat, or that it wasn't man-made, then all we would have done would be make a mistake in analysis, which we could correct for. But if it turned out that there was and we'd done nothing about it, then it would be too late to do anything at all. So we might as well. Does that persuade us? Does that, does, is that the game-changing argument on this? That we, we're not sure, we don't have another planet, he said, to do the experiment on. So let's run with this, and if it turns out to be hogwash... The only thing we're really, the, the mistake that was made was a, a mistaken analysis, I think were his words. Uh, but if it turns out this was a very real thing, then we've warded off the uh, inevitable demise of our planet, apparently. 
Does that sell it to you? 0344 499 1000. And I suppose the argument does get, it gets jumbled with like Greta and the like. You know, Greta pitches up and you just want to start eating off your own face when you hear a child start dictating about what people should be doing with their lives. 0344 499 1000. Simple question. Why are you struggling to buy into the green revolution? This is the backbone of Boris's big plans for the future. Is this the man you voted? for? What's the problem with green-based issues for you? Why are you not buying into it?